Hi, I'm Katie from What Katie Did, and today I'm talking about our new knitwear. Yes, we've finally got around to doing some knitwear to go with our clothing. It's been kind of in production probably for about nine months now. We were hoping to have it ready for the Goodwood Revival, which is the biggest show we do, which takes place in September in near Chichester in the UK every year. And unfortunately it didn't happen it could have happened but we didn't quite get there and so now we're launching in february 22. going into something new is always a bit of a challenge and um, knitwear was no exception i started looking at factories probably this time last year and then terry started looking at factories about easter last year to try and find someone who who would work with us and someone we had we had a good good relationship with and the problem that we found is that we we didn't know the terminology we didn't know how what we were supposed to be talking about and when you go to a factory they really expect you to know what you're talking about and things like when you buy fabrics you buy in meters and when you buy yarn for knitwear you buy in kilograms so you have to go you have to find a factory then you have to source the yarn and of course we don't know how yarn works or what thickness yarn or what it all looks like so we were lucky enough to be pointed in the right direction by an amazing factory in the uk and although we spoke to a few people there was only this one factory which really spent the time in saying well this is what you need and this is where you go and this is this is how it all works so they pointed us in the direction of filma yarns which use they're an italian company but they um, use egyptian cotton and i wanted to use cotton because um, i wanted i didn't want to use a man-made fiber and as i'm vegan i didn't want to use wool and it turns out when I was going through my wardrobe, I had a lot of cotton knitwear. You know, cotton isn't a fibre that you think of really for knitwear, but when I went through my collection, it turns out that I had a lot of cotton um, knitwear that had washed really well, that had lasted really well. And so cotton, cotton was an obvious choice for our range. The Filma Yarn Company um, is fully transparent about um, their cotton, where it comes from, how it's grown, if everyone's uh, fairly paid. And so it's totally ethical all the way through. Um, the dyeing is, you know, not non-polluting and totally safe. So, um, and they invest in educating farmers, paying them fair wages, making sure that women are educated and do, doing crop rotation so the, the land isn't worn out. So it's, it's a good company to deal with. And of course, once we found the yarn, it was then off to the factory to get our samples made. And this is where it went slightly wrong because the factory we found were really nice and we messed up our figures. When we got there, it was pretty obvious that something was seriously wrong because um, they were there making for Chanel and Hermes and all the top you know, the top designer companies and and um, I never realised how much designer knitwear costs. I have I have a couple of Vivian Westwood cardigans that I bought on eBay and that was like my my level for, for higher knitwear and I really we really had no idea. I, I was Googling it when I was there and Terry was showing Terry and she was like yikes <laughs> because he was saying oh yeah yeah we do we do um lower price garments as well and we were like yes and the scary the scary thing was we could have actually have gone into production with them we could have i think the minimum we we would have had to have charged for a cardigan would have been 150 pounds which is obviously um, a lot more than our price points for other garments. Having said that, our dresses are like, some of them are 120, velvet ones are 150, 160. So it wasn't out of the question. And we did, we did really seriously think about it for, for a while. Um, it was really interesting learning about how everything was made and how, how the industry worked. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but Scotland, when it comes to design and knitwear, Scotland is 
really renowned for his knitwear and the factory we were looking at it was it was it was in England. I was going to say the UK, obviously Scotland's still in the UK at the moment. Um, it was in England, but they had close ties with the Scottish knitwear factories. And really, we do have Chanel to thank for that because the couture houses in France and Paris especially there, and Chanel especially, uh, were very keen years and years ago to keep these skills going. And in, in Paris, they call them the petit man, they call them the, the little hands. And basically, without the support of, you know, the big design houses, these, these you know, skills would have disappeared. And I'm sure without the support of Parisian design companies, our, our, in particular, our Scottish knitwear would have disappeared. And today, I mean, the factory we, visit, we visit, visited is quite a new factory. And they've opened due to the demand in design and knitwear. So it's great that it's actually not only going, but it's thriving. One of the things that I knew nothing about was how the knitwear is finished. And with design and knitwear, what you're paying for is the hand finishing. And if you look at the seams inside your knitwear, and this, I know this is getting technical, but this is basically what you're paying for. Um, when you look at the seams inside design and knitwear, they're totally flat. And basically the seams are linked by hand. And I looked inside my Vivian Westwood um, cardigan, which retails for like 400 pounds, and that was just seamed. So that wasn't at a level that the factory we visited were, were working at. And when we, we spoke to the factory about having it machine finished, they said it really wouldn't make a huge amount of difference. And this is this is one of the challenges with factories. If factories are used to manufacturing something at a certain level, then making it, um, you know, cutting corners really isn't on their roadmap. They're, they're not going to do that But because, you know, they one of the things is they're used to doing it in a certain way. So if they've got one little company wanting stuff done in a different way to actually set up the different production will use up all the time and, and money you would have saved by doing it faster by you know, retraining everyone and swapping over the production. So you wouldn't actually save, save very much anyway. So at the end of the day, we walked away with our sample cardigan and sweater, um, the most expensive cardigan and sweater that I've ever owned. Still cheaper than Chanel, but um, very expensive. Learned a lot. And at that point, this was over the summer, we could have just about got the knitwear out for Goodwood in September and although we were all very very tempted in the end we decided that we did need to go somewhere somewhere cheaper not quite at that designer level and so that that's what's called the delay just like knitwear just like the lingerie world knitwear world is very very closely knit and it turns out that the factory we are working with they were actually visiting the factory we visited um, the same morning, so they, they knew about us already. And they're an Anglo-Indian factory, so they have a factory in the UK and they also have a factory in India. And um, because of the price points, we're actually manufacturing in India. Um, as you probably know, our main lingerie factory is in India, so we have very close ties with the country. And we know because the factory is, you know, they've got a base in the UK and India, everything's ethically made and it's, you know, it's easy to visit and they're easy to talk to. And they do already manufacture for quite, quite a few other people we know. We're actually using the same yarn we were going to use in the, in the original factory. So that's, that's good. And it's basically the same, the same pattern. The first colour we're doing, of course, is black, that old staple. It's very difficult looking at other vintage repro brands about what, what they do. And, you know, we don't want to tread on any toes. So we're trying to do something different, but still obviously making it commercial because the idea is to sell things. So what we've done is we're... I have spoken about this in our stories as well. We're actually going by the seamed colours of our stockings. So we're making, we print all our fabrics to our own specifications and we're actually 
working from the stockings up, which is totally topsy-turvy, probably the way other people do it. We're starting from, from the inside out. So we have the, the pink here, which matches our pink seam stockings, and eventually we'll do a pink cardigan to match the pink seams. But to begin with, we're starting with black because black's the basic. And then moving on, we'll probably go to claret and build up the collection. Every couple of months, we'll, we'll add a new color. So it will be a range of well-made knitwear that is designed to be a classic 1950s style and to, to last you year in and year out. And over the years, you'll gradually be able to build up your collection. One of the things that was very important to me was that it was to be cropped, but not too cropped, if that makes sense. Um, in the 50s, you, you generally had sweaters that finished just below the waist. And because what Katie did is so much about the waist, I wanted it to finish on the waist so you could still lift your arms up and everything without you know, it pulling up too much and exposing your, your tummy. But I wanted it to accentuate the waist. So we may have made the cuff of the waist not, it's not tight, but it has been knitted so, so it comes in. And obviously it stretches, it stretches out and it can be worn in or out. But if you're wearing a corset or a waist cincher, it does give that nipped in look, which gives, is um, in the industry, that's our unique selling point. It finishes on the waist. It's nicely nipped in and it gives you that 1950s silhouette. So that is what makes, it makes our knitwear special. We're doing, we've got a short sleeved jumper and we've also got the cardigan as well to go on top. And it's designed to be worn either separate or together. Um, the cardigans work perfectly over our dresses and the sweaters obviously go great with our skirts. Although we're just starting with black, I can't wait to get more colours in and be able to coordinate with, with our clothing because we've got you know big plans for the rest of this year and we've got lots of new designs in the pipeline as well as lots of new prints and it'll be really exciting to to be able to you know match match your seam stockings to your cardigans and your dresses and although I don't want to be too too matchy matchy it is nice just to have some kind of hint of something going on that there's a you know it's all well thought out and um, it's all designed to coordinate and, and mix and match together. If you do have any questions about our lingerie, knitwear or fashion, please get in touch. And in the meantime, take care and I'll catch up with you soon.